Welcome back, guys and gals. You know what time of day it is. It's newsletter time. JJ here. Schooltrade.com. Sidewaysmarkets.com is our trading blog address. It is December 15th. It is December 15th, boys and girls. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My name is Joseph James. I hope you had a great weekend. The countdown's on. The countdown is on. Last last week of the year for yours truly. It should be for you too. We got quad witching to talk about. Quad what? Yeah, quad witching, quadruple witching every three months, right? It's December right now, folks. We'll talk about that in a moment here. Before we jump into everything, everything bearish here. Gold tumbles off the highs. I heard crude was was bearish, right? <laughs> yeah, little bird told me. Uh, and of course, Russell finally comes off those highs. Everything we talked about last week continues to just unravel here today. Hopefully you were still in that gold. Hopefully you didn't bail on that short off the highs on gold. If you stuck it out with me on gold, boy, you got paid really, really well. Okay, I could talk about this for hours here. Before we jump into our charts here for this evening, let's make sure here we're watching this video on our trading blog. Sidewaysmarkets.com, that's where you want to be watching this video right now. If you're watching the video on our YouTube page, there's a link right below the video to take you over here to the blog. Three reasons why. First reason, you can download all the charts. Yes, all of them, not just a few of them. You can download all the same charts that I'm going to show you right now. You can download those and have them on your computer be ready for tomorrow or this evening or whenever you need them. Second thing, upper left-hand corner. If you're not a member yet of schooloftrade.com, I would love to invite you to come out and test drive our live trade room. See what it feels like to be a member. If you'd like to grab your free pass to attend our live trade room, upper left-hand corner, upper left-hand corner, and then lower left-hand corner, please excuse the... Uh, ugly mug there. Right above my ugly mug, you'll see a spot for your name and your email address to join our nightly newsletter mailing list. All right, guys. Now, if you join the mailing list or you grab your free pass, I'm going to send you a verification email to make sure you're not a robot and to make sure we have the correct email address right, to send you this newsletter every evening. All right. And don't forget about sending this to a friend, right? Don't hog all the good stuff to yourself. Make sure you share this information with a friend, social media, send them an email, whatever it takes. All right, guys? Welcome back. Welcome back. we got an exciting week ahead of us here this week. It's going to be a short week for me. I'll only be here through Wednesday, and then I am getting the heck out of here ahead of that holiday weekend coming up. Boy, what a great time of year. What a great time of the year. So a short week here for us this week, but boy, we got a lot of stuff going on. we got quad witching. we got FOMC. we got rollover. Deep breath. Deep breath here. What are we looking at here for the Russell? Now, boy, we sure had some fun over the past few weeks on this Russell, right? I mean, it was just up and down and up and down. I'm not a big fan of roller coasters, right? But this type of roller coaster definitely made us some great cash over the past few weeks here on the Russell. If you took my advice over the past, three, I think it was three weeks, right? It was middle of, uh, it was middle of October, so uh, yeah, about three and a half, four weeks there. Made a great amount of cash on this, buying lows, selling highs, but now here we are. Look at this. Now this is where this is where new traders are going to get in trouble right here. I do not want to sell right here. This is not the place to be selling. Okay. Let me describe to you the best way we're going to be trading this act because you can see just made that lower low. Right. We're now breaking below that 43.3. You know, we were, we've been waiting on this for a while. I thought this was going to happen a few weeks ago. Right. Went sideways. Now we go lower. What I need to be careful of is we're most likely not going to just drop. We're most likely going to try to go back inside that range. Right. Repeat after me. The first time we break out of a range, it's likely to fail. The first time we break out of a range, it is likely to fail. This is the first time we've broken out of that range. Maybe it goes and collapses, but it's highly unlikely. And if it happens right now, it won't happen very often consistently. Okay, so we're going to be waiting for price to go back inside this range and then look for a selling opportunity. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to sell directly into 43.3, right? Because that'll be, that'll be bad news there. So we're really expecting now this price to go back inside this range before we get a decent short 
off these highs. It would just be too easy, right? I mean, it would just it would be too easy just to sell these lows, and you know these markets aren't going to make it that easy on us, right? Remember, you are you are effectively competing against the smartest minds in the world, right? Not to be intimidated. Okay, you keep it simple, you follow your rules, you risk less than 2% of your account, you will beat those smart minds. Okay, but you got to do it the right way. So sellers are definitely trying to take control right now, but until I see this thing go up and then come back down, right now I'm at the lows of this range. I'm at the lows of this range. So short-term buying opportunities, long-term selling opportunities here right now on the Russell. I've got targets for us waiting down the bottom here, 28.1, 13 evens, 11.2, 65.6. Okay, and of course, I've given you guys two areas here to look for little nibbles to the downside there right as we go back up. Okay, get a little short-term channel there. This chart, not the most useful for us day traders. If you're a long-term swing trader, Right, like I know a lot of you guys are, those levels overhead are going to be great buying opportunities over the next two, three, four weeks here on the Russell. Now, let's go to some day trading time frames. 16 anchor chart. Now we're talking. Right? Now we're talking. Again, like I said, I would expect to see short term buying. Now, you know me, I'm going to stick to my trend. Okay? So if you'd like a little bit of risk, short term buying, that'll be available to you here overnight. I would definitely be looking, though, right now at these three sell zones overhead. I've got 46 to 49, 54 to 60, 67 to 72. We go up, wait for the reversal, find the entry pattern, and we're back down. If it blows right through it, I'll look for it there. If it keeps going, no, no, no worries on my part. I'll keep waiting for the price to jump off these lows so we can sell it right back down. Now, if you're a member of mine, we have a golden ratio extension coming off of this big move, right? So we are oversold here. I don't like to use the term oversold because there, there really isn't any such thing, right? The market can do whatever the heck it wants to do, right? <laughs> Take a look at crude, for example, right? There's no reason why it can't just keep melting down right now. Again, though, for lack of a better term, we are oversold, right? We are extended to the downside. We have to assume there'll be some profit taking. And as you saw in that 32 anchor chart, we pretty much have an idea of what's coming next year. We're probably going to get short-term price moving higher before we get a chance to go lower. Moving finally to our Russell price action chart, okay? Russell has a seller's target down around 1130 this evening. So before we start looking for a reversal back higher, I'm definitely still going to stay focused to the downside. Now, this may end up just being a sideways range, right? Well, it's, it's already a sideways range. But basically, those sellers still have one more shot here, in my opinion, overnight to get to that 1130. If we get down to the 1130, we will then be looking to buy that low, target back up at the high, okay? If we do not get to those lows and we just go higher, selling, selling. Now, when I look at this chart, I see this range. It's really important you remember breakout strategy. If you're a member of School of Trade, you know the three ways we're looking for breakouts. Here's one scenario. Jump up, trap, short. Another scenario, really jump up, right? Fast, fast move up, fade, short, okay? I don't think we go lower, but if we do go lower and make it through it, I'm not going to take this short, but it'd be retracement short. I'd be more inclined to go up, pull back long. And the reason why is because this measured move, right? It's going to be difficult to go lower and then keep going lower. I'd be inclined to look for a buy at that low. Again, in my opinion, we're going to get short-term buyers before we get short-term sellers. If we do slam down to these 1130 lows here, though, overnight – we're going to need to see a bit of a movement off it before we can try again. I just, I just don't think we're going to get an easy shot to the downside here without getting some, at least some buyers, some profit taking, some bargain hunting there at 11:30. All right, guys. So be careful to the downside here. Be careful to the downside, and unless we see it bounce off 11:30 and then give it another shot to the downside. Right now, I'm looking to be a seller right now, and I've got 45.5 and. 56.6 overhead. Don't forget, all these charts will be available for you guys to download. How about that gold? How about that gold? I was just hooting and hollering, right, last week, last Thursday. 
I know, I probably sounded like a spoiled brat, right? Get off these highs. Get off these highs. We saw record-breaking economic news. There was no reason for this gold to be going higher except for the whole fear premium surrounding crude oil right now, which has no bearing. It's no real merit for it. But the bottom line is, here on the gold, as you can see, we have us coming off those highs. Finally, like I said last week, do not dump those contracts until you get to that 1,200. And we finally made it back off those highs, back to 1,200. If you're still short with me here right now, you've got to take some profit. If you haven't taken profit yet, do so right now. Do not give up this profit at 1,200. It's too easy. Next targets down below, 1190.4, 1162.5, and dare I say, back around 1130 at these lows. All right, I don't think we're going to get down there in one fell swoop. My technicals tell me we should see price going higher here. If you just glance at this chart, you'll see this big, big straight line here. Pretty irrational drop, as you saw, right? Pretty irrational drop off those highs. So again, take some profit here if you haven't done so. So we tumble off the highs. Next couple targets are listed below, right? You got some good targets waiting for you down bottom. And then... Again, technically speaking right now, if you, if, you didn't, if you didn't get with me on the sell up at these highs, as I talked about last week, now you got to stay patient. Stay patient here and sell this 15, sell this 28.8. It's not rocket science. Do not overthink it. But if you missed the short off the high, you did. You missed it. Okay? No big deal. These trades are like buses. Right? They'll come around again soon. Just wait patiently for it. So here's the reason why I'm telling you right now. Be be very careful selling gold right now. This is a classic example of a channel overshoot. Now, we know why this happened. Again, that big stinking round number at 1,200, you know, the break-even point for the mining industry. Our jobs, our jobs, right? Yeah, we, we, we know. We've heard from you miners. We know you're going to be stuck in a, in, a, in a worse hole if it stays below 1,200. We get it. So 1,200 is the quote-unquote break-even point when all the you know, whistles start firing off and we lose our jabs, right? But we know that that 1200 will be a magnet. So that's one reason why price should get moving higher here. But really, the channel overshoots give it away, right? I mean, you, you kind of think about what happened here, right? We're doing fine. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. And then whoops-a-daisy, the sellers bit off a little bit more than they could chew right there. And basically what happens is when you get a channel overshoot, Right? Think about think about what happens. When you get a channel overshoot, what is the psychology behind a channel overshoot? Let's think about the sellers first. If you're a seller and you see a channel overshoot, what do you what, what are you thinking? Well, if you're smart, you're taking your money out of the market, right? You're taking some profit. Because you know it's gonna snap back, right? So if you're smart, you take your money out of the market. Well, here's what happens. The smart money takes their profit on the channel overshoot. So we get the initial jump. But I want you to think about those greedy traders. I want you to think about those sellers who didn't have the, the cojones take their money out when they should have. Now think about what happens next. They're going to hold. And once they see it hit that first sell zone and go higher, what's going to happen? They're going to wish they would have sold. They're going to wish they would have covered their short at that low. Think about it. Right? You're short, you're short, you're short. Woo! Right? Fun times. Down to 1195. The smart money takes profit. That's the initial push off those lows. Right? Maybe you get some bargain hunters like me who, who always buy those channel overshoots. But think about the rookies out there that didn't know any better. They see it go back up. They watch the sellers try again. And what's likely to happen now is we're likely to fail and go even higher. Now, the psychology that comes in here, it's FOMO. This is where all the uninformed traders who didn't take their profit, now they have that fear of missing out. So what do they do? They dump everything. They don't just take a small portion of profit. They say, oh, great, I should have taken my money there. I've given back all this profit. Just get out right now. And so that, right, that psychology causes a move that initially jumps off those lows because of the profit takers. But then the greedy traders, they try to hold it, and once they realize they're wrong, wham, right, it tends to jump. 
So what I'm telling you right now is, is that channel overshoot tells me stay the heck away from the sell side. It also tells me that this level right here, 1204, 1207, is highly suspicious. It is. I would be more inclined to look for a sell at 1212, 1219, 1238. Think of it this way. Big drops, big pops, right? That elasticity, right? That elasticity where it hits, where it goes down way too far and then whoop, snaps right back up. So be patient on the sell side. I, I'm going to be avoiding, I'll, I'll look for it, but I'm not, if I do get into a short on this one, it'll be a very small position and it's going to be a beautiful pattern. Last but not least here on the gold is a third reason why we got to be staying patient. We got to stay patient here on gold. As you can see, another example, sellers had their way with it, right? Buyers thought they had the, right? Buyers thought they had the win on them. And of course, one, two, we got our measured move consolidation. We do not expect to go lower here right now. We do not expect to go lower. Sellers had complete control today. They, we are most likely now going to see a short-term correction. It's not going to be forever. We're still bearish right now, but it will likely be a short-term correction. And I would love to see a selling opportunity up here around that 1208, 1217, right? That 1208, again, is going to get us through that 1207, Right, so again, still be careful at 1207. I would definitely expect a very strong snap back here, possibly all the way back up to this consolidation area, right, which would be just delicious, right? Selling that 1217, selling that 1221, right? And can you guess where we're going to go next? Right back to 1200 again, right? There's a little bit of a trend developing here, right? Absolutely. Buy below 1200, sell above 1200. It's relatively simple. Now, how low can we go? How low, how low can this crew really go? We thought 60 was ridiculous. Today, we heard the United Arab Emirates, we heard their oil minister say 40 today. Oh, come on. We are not going to be seeing, okay, maybe we will. Maybe we will. I never thought we'd see 55. And here we go. So, guys, don't overthink this right now. Just like I said on gold, don't overthink this too much. Okay, it's so easy right now to overthink this. Everybody and their sister is talking about crude right now, right? You can't, you can't avoid it. Even if you have no idea what's happening, you go to the gas pump here in the U.S. and they're almost paying you to fill up your tank, right? You, we'll be trading bottles of water, right, for bottles of crude. That's the scenario right now. Stay short but stay patient. OPEC does not appear to be worried. We continue to hear them talk on the, on, on the news wires right now about how they're not worried, they're not going to cut production, you've got the big producers, yeah, you've all heard all the, all, the, all the BS, you've heard it all. So don't overthink it, trend is down, sell it resistance overhead. Until this stops working, why would we shoot the horse that got us here? Right? Keep riding that horse. So as we go through, I'm just simply looking for areas that I can find as resistance overhead to look for more selling opportunities. 5628, 5688, 5794, 5827, the list keeps going on. 6009, 60.13. All right, guys. Now, the biggest challenge that we have this week is we have a double, well, a triple whammy. I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. But the first of the whammies happen for contract rollover. Now, the last few months, crude oil has been rolling over at odd. It's, it's either a day early or a day late. Don't ask me why. I just came for the dancing. I didn't make the rules. But we do know that we are projected right now to have a rollover date on Wednesday. And just like a good crude oil market would do, right, Wednesday is also FOMC, Wednesday is also inventories, right, why don't we just, why don't we just throw in a bat mitzvah, right, in the whole, in the whole, uh, you know, scheme of things too, just to, just to make some fun out of it, right? I mean, we have a ton of stuff projected for Wednesday right now. That's the concern I have right now. We may simply just run out of time this week. Right? We may simply run out of time. There's a lot going on this week. There's a lot of hoopla in the markets right now. So we're going to stay focused. We're going to continue here to look for selling opportunities here at the highs. You've got reversal lines. You've got trigger zones. 
right, that are overhead right now. So just stay patient. That's the best thing I can tell you right now. The best trading opportunities over the past few weeks have come right when you thought this move was over. That's the way it always goes. The best selling opportunities are right when the bulls have control. Right? Right when you think this this seller's dream has, has expired, that's when you're gonna get the best selling opportunities here on the crew. All right. And definitely I, I want an invite to that bot mitzvah on Wednesday, by the way. Gotta love that. What a, what a good time. Anyways, moving from the thirty two to the sixteen now. Now we look at our short-term time frame, and now we've got a lot more opportunities here in the short term. Again, you'll notice that low at 55.87. We're clearly bearish here right now. I've got four different sell zones overhead. All I have to do is simply wait for price to get into the sell zone, find the reversal pattern, and find that entry pattern short, right? Up and down, up and down. Now, obviously, we are well oversold here. Another big sell-off for today, so don't force it, right? That's the, one thing we're, that's the one thing we're not doing right now on crew. We don't need to, okay? I know your emotions are charged up. Maybe you missed the move the past few months. You're trying to make some money here at the end of the year right now, but do not, do not abandon your risk parameters and your trading plan. All right, guys, so wait for those sell zones to be tested. Find the entry patterns to the short side, right, and take those trades, risking less than 2%. Last but not least here on the crude, our price action chart, pretty much exactly what we saw this morning, right? We had a very strong downtrend day, sloppy as the Dickens. I mean, and, and the Dickens is pretty sloppy, by the way, in, in, case, you, in case you're unaware, right? Very sloppy coming down, right? Very, very sloppy coming down here. It was, a, it was a real rough and tumble day. It was easy to know direction, but it was pretty slopped up here today. And again, you can kind of feel the emotions. This market is fully charged with emotions right now. We get one, we get two into consolidation. We have our measured move trading range right now. When I look at this chart, the first thing I think of is what? Breakouts breakouts. Now, it's very rare that we get after that measured move down. It's very rare that we get a continuation lower, right? So I, I, would, be, I would be skeptical of that move lower. I would definitely be looking for a possible nibble here, right? A little short-term buy. If it suits your fancy, right? I'll be looking for the sell side here right now. But again, breakout, pull back, right? There's one way to do it. Another option here would be a breakout fade, breakout fade, right? So definitely, no matter what you do, look for taking profit if you're long, but look for selling opportunities at these red dash lines overhead. 56.18, 56.72, 57.24, 58, and again, you can see on the way up. So right now, be aware if you're a member of mine, your breakout strategy is calling, right? Breakout strategy is calling, you need that strategy right now on crude oil. Stay to the downside here on crude, and we will now talk about this craziness that is this third week of the month of December. Now, guys, first of all, talking about this calendar right now, this is the third week of the month, which means it's OPEX. This, this is not your average OPEX. This is the third week of every three months. Okay, so that funny, weird, that weird word they have here, quadruple witching. I'm going to put a link below the video tonight, and it will talk to you about what quad witching is, how we trade it. Uh, this is a trader's holiday. It really is. Quadruple witching is notorious for being a low volume, highly speculative week during the year. Again, we have four of them every year. It's the end. Of, it's, it's, it's the third week of March third week of June, third week of September, and third week of December. Okay, so if you're trading this week, you got to be aware Thursday, Friday are going to be nasty. All right, Thursday, Friday are going to be nasty. So you might want to go see grandma, right, get an early start on the, uh, on the Christmas presents being wrapped up, right, practicing using that dreidel. Well, no, you shouldn't because tomorrow we start Hanukkah. So you should already know how to use that dreidel by then. Anyways, quad witching on Friday. Remember, this whole week is a trader's holiday. So if you're trading this week, be careful, okay? Consider yourself warned. Looking at the rest of this week, tomorrow we have the beginning of FOMC, right? Get the FOMC meeting on Wednesday or begins tomorrow, the announcement on Wednesday. 
So again, like I said, a triple threat this week. We got FOMC, we've got crude rollover, and we have the quadruple witching, quote unquote, traders holiday. Okay, this is why this time of the year, this week is a trader's holiday. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. So consider yourself warned. News here though. Tonight, we have news 8.45 p.m. from our good friends in China. We got manufacturing in China. I'd be lying to you if I said that wasn't going to be probably the biggest news we get in the next 18 hours. We then go to Europe. We've got news out of France, news out of Germany, news out of the EU. We've got Italian merchandise trade. We've got Great Britain CPI. I mean, literally, there is a whole plethora, starting with China, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Red Star news events in the next 24 hours. Just a little bit of action going on. Like I said, there's a whole party going on this, this week regarding news events. So we start in China tonight. We go into Europe tomorrow morning. We get a ton of news in Europe tomorrow morning, including that German ZEW, okay, the, or, or the zoo survey, whatever you want to call it. Right, so we know we get a lot happening in London, a lot happening in Europe. That should give you guys in Europe a nice peppering of good price action moves tomorrow morning. And then we jump right into housing starts. So we get housing starts in the U.S. tomorrow at 8.30. We get some manufacturing in Canada at 8.30. We got manufacturing at 9.45. So, guys, it's going to be a full day tomorrow. It's going to be a full day tomorrow. Starting tonight in China, tomorrow morning in Europe, we then go into the U.S. session for 8.30, and then we got that 9.45 p.m. or 9.45 a.m. Uh, PMI manufacturing index to wrap up the morning session. Now, with this week being so close to the holiday, be aware it's all morning trading right now. I mean, we saw some good moves, albeit low volume, but right now, make your money in the mornings right now. And after we get through Wednesday, you've really got to start paying close attention to that time of day. All right, guys? So we're not going to worry too much. But right now, I would say you should have no problem trading this week through Wednesday. The only thing I'm worried about is that FOMC meeting. Like I said, like I said earlier, we may just simply run out of time this week. Okay, because you know you're going to have that self-filling prophecy ahead of the FOMC, right? So Wednesday is at risk for being kind of a, you know, sleepy, sloppy, you know, self-filling prophecy type of day. Tuesday really could be our big day this week. It, it really could be, right? I think Thursday is going to be a waste. Friday, again, I mean, half the folks will be, will be sipping on the eggnog on Friday just knowing it's quad witching. We'll touch base again tomorrow. We will know a lot more about how this market reacts tomorrow. If we have great volume tomorrow, it'll probably carry over to Wednesday. If it's real quiet tomorrow, we'll be talking about tomorrow night in the newsletter, and we'll give you guys some guidance. Either way you slice it, though, guys, you got some great opportunities coming your way here tomorrow, the second day of quadruple witching. Want to remind you guys, grab your free pass, register for the newsletter, download those charts today, and if you feel so obliged, Head over here to schooltrade.com. Join our free trial. We got a free trial, our membership package here at schooltrade.com. We have three levels of membership, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And don't forget, I've got someone standing by 24-7-365 to answer all your questions. My name is Joseph, broadcasting live from a very cold afternoon here in a kind of dreary, cloudy Los Angeles, California. It is that time of the year here. We don't see this we don't see this weather very often here in LA, but it's definitely that time of the year here right now. You guys stay warm, stay dry out there, stay on the right side of the market, and remember, follow that plan for tomorrow. And if you don't have a plan, I would love to give you a plan to trade with, and we'll do it together every day in our trade room. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time in our trade room, or same bat time, same bat channel back here tomorrow night. 8 p.m. Eastern Time for your nightly newsletter. I'm out of here. Adios, amigos. Bye for now.